Thanks to all of you for being here. This is such a special treat for me to talk to all the cast members, some of who have been on the show on CBS this morning. So without further ado, let me introduce all of them to you. First, Keith Carradine, who plays President Conrad Dalton. <laughs> B.B. Newerth, who plays State Department Chief of Staff Nadine Tolliver. <laughs> Shelko Ivanovic, who plays Presidential Chief of Staff Russell Jackson. <laughs> Tim Daly, who plays Henry McCord, theologian and DIA operative. Hey, Leone, who plays Secretary of State Elizabeth McCord. Barbara Hall, the executive producer of Madam Secretary. And Lori McCreary, executive producer of Madam Secretary. So again, thank you all for being here. Um, we're gonna have a great conversation. I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and then we're gonna leave time for those of you who have come to join us tonight to also ask some of the cast and executive producers questions as well. So let me start with Barbara and Lori. How hard is it or easy is it to uh, write and produce a show like this in the midst of a presidential campaign? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's sometimes that I can't believe that we did this on purpose. We, <laughs> we knew we had an election coming up at, uh, in reality, and, and the timing was right on our show to do a, an election, and I thought, well, let's do a parallel election. Let's do sort of a parallel universe to, you know, give some people something to compare it to. So we have, uh, it's, it's challenging, except that we're doing a parallel election. We're not trying to compete with this one at all. So that's, that would be a problem. Impossible. <laughs> but are there some things that happen in the presidential election that you draw ideas from? The, I mean, I think the great thing is that our, um, the general populace now knows a lot more about, you need 270. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more that they, everyone has been educated on. So we get to use a little bit of shorthand this year and not have to go so deep into the kind of policy wonky stuff and really get into the meat of the issues. Mm -hmm. But it was deliberate to have a, a, a complement presidential election at the same time. Yes, we thought that since the discussion would be in the air and everybody would be using the vocabulary of an election, and as Laurie said, going into great detail about what can happen in an election, we, we wanted to take advantage of the fact that people would have that in, 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 as their discussion. I think the exciting part for us is we get to portray an election the way we would like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to watch it. <laughs> So, Taya, I can remember when this show premiered on CBS, and Bob Schieffer, of course, who is our uh, moderator of Face the Nation, invited you and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright to come together to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. What's it like playing this role, and what was it like spending time with Madeleine Albright? Um, she's a hoot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's a fire plug. She's this tiny little thing. Rumor has it she can bench 350, <laughs> which is like eight of her. Um, and she was actually very helpful, and it was intimidating a little bit. She was really the source of, uh, of my fear. <laughs> because. because she sort of described to me what I had taken on. I mean, she really wanted me to go out there, and she said, here's some things you need to get across. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, and I think the greatest compliment, first of all, was that she was willing to come on the show. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, she said at the end of our first season, she said, you have made foreign policy less foreign. And for that, I'm very grateful. And I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. And have you spent time with Hillary Clinton? I have not. And I know, that's how I feel. Um, but I'm thinking that's going to happen. <laughs> So Tim, you play the husband, Henry, and one of the great things that he is a theologian. So it's this great kind of, it forces her to deal with some of the complex moral ethical issues. What do you like about the role? You know, I think that the thing that I like the most is, what Henry has taught me is that uh, for people who have a strong sense of ethics or a strong moral center, I think 
often a mistake is made <clears throat> in thinking that those things are immutable. They're these things that, you, that are solidly drawn that never change. And Henry has taught me that that's not true, that having an ethical path or a moral, moral center is something you constantly have to work toward. It's a practice. And, and you know, because of changing circumstances and the changes in yourself, you have to keep guiding yourself towards that path. And I think that has hopefully served me a little well. And I have spent time with Hillary Clinton, by the way. <laughs> okay, okay, quickly, let me just tell you this story. So it was at the Democratic Convention. <laughs> relax, relax. And I'm in the, in the basement of the, the Philadelphia arena, and, and Bill Clinton walks in, and I hear him, he says, you, you come over here, I gotta talk to you. <laughs> yeah, now listen to me, now I've been married to the Secretary of State, I know what that's like, but I gotta do some of that spy stuff that you do on your <laughs> I wanna know how I get to do some of that stuff. Okay? That's so, pretty good. That's had pretty me good. In his clutches like this yeah. for about 10 minutes, and he's talking to me, and I'm like, Bill, I mean, come on the show. <laughs> and then, and then I, I met they Hillary. They do watch, they do both, and, they'd love to watch. And then I ran into Hillary, I'm standing in line to have my picture take with her, and she goes, you! I I love your show. And I'm like, you're th what? <laughs> Seriously? And so it turns out, I'm here to tell you, they are fans of the show. Just saying. So, Shelko, what's it like running the White House? <laughs> dream. Have your emails been hacked like John Podesta's? Yeah. No, I'm very careful where I write an email mm -hmm. yeah. these days. Um, I, that's my favorite thing, actually, is, is about the, the small p politics of politics and, 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 and power. Um, and it's one of the things I, I, I liked about the show from, from the start is there, all, there are these bigger issues that we deal with and then we deal with just literally the politics and the humdrum of power because you cannot achieve anything unless you actually have the power to, to do that. But what compromises do you make mm -hmm. in order to keep that? Where do you, at what point are you selling your soul? Um, and all those things are, uh, it takes a real fighter. I don't know if Rahm Emanuel was a, was a, a, a kind of icon for me or, or uh, somebody that I drew on necessarily, but he's somebody who certainly had a reputation of, of being a real fighter and, and tough, tough and, and passionate um, uh, to a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and the purpose is, unless you're here, unless you're in this house, you cannot actually achieve the things you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the balance always is, <clears throat> at what point does maintaining power actually start to undermine what you're trying to do? And that's one of the things I like about the election story, because that's the, one of the bigger questions hmm. is that we're facing, is, is at what point um, are you staying in power for the sake of power? Uh, and at one point, are you doing this because you truly believe it's the right thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going deep. Going deep. Bibi, I mean, Nadine, she's tough. You're, Do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we know you from Broadway or Tony Award winner, but this is a d different type of character for you, do you think? Um, How would you say she is different? Yeah. Uh, I did. I don't see her as tough. You don't. I, yeah, I don't know where that. Except I have a tough-looking face. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, what's tough about her? Um, I can tell you what I like about her, and also uh, what I uh, uh, have learned from her. Uh, um, she. I. I like her uh, quiet strength. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't say much because she doesn't have to, and when she speaks, it's. It's, she has a reason to say something. Mm -hmm. She doesn't open her mouth unless she should. Yeah. And um, I find her elegant mm -hmm. and extremely smart. Uh, good? Much, much smarter than I am. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I, I am not someone who keeps my mouth shut when, <laughs> <laughs> when they should. Yeah. So, so I really admire that in her, and I, I admire her strength. Yeah. Mr. But Pres tough, I don't yeah. know where that comes from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. I asked him earlier, I said, how many people come up to you now and say Mr. President to you on the street who love the show? It happens more frequently with every season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always done in uh, great humor, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes me appreciate the the, the line that gets crossed between fiction and reality and how the general public 
really appreciates what we do as entertainers. Mm -hmm. and, and when I have moments like that, I mean, I was in, in a whole paycheck, Whole Foods out in, uh, <laughs> out in uh, California, and I was coming up the aisle with my cart, you know, and as I rounded the corner, there was a guy standing there, and as I walked, as I turned the corner past him, he just went, Mr. President. <laughs> You know, you, just, you have to love that. Um, the thing I'm not crazy about is when people come up to me, come up to me and say, "I'm writing you in." Yeah. <laughs> not only would I never want that job for real, but don't waste the vote. Isn't that funny? I did just read that Google, one of the top searches recently, was how to write in a presidential. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh-oh, Keith. Saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Barbara and Lori, so how many seasons in the future can we expect Madam Secretary to continue? <laughs> As many. How many One do you Yeah, exactly. How many do you want? <laughs> we, we have a lot in us, I think. Yeah. I think one of the interesting things we talked about oh, is great. <laughs> 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 we, 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 can, we can get into current politics, too, but... I want to talk just a little bit, because I don't think people realize the intensity of, of how hard this is to produce <laughs> a program like this. Um, I mean, how many hours does it take to shoot one episode? Um, one episode takes eight days. But to just give you an example, a typical movie takes anywhere from 55 to 60 days, and that's only twice as long as one of our episodes. So in nine months, when, where I would normally make a feature film for two hours, we do 23 Mm -hmm. hours of programming in nine months. It's, it's pretty, it's amazing that she's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> and she's sitting here, and everyone. It, it, it's grueling. It's every eight days we're shooting one episode, posting another, editing the other, and prepping another. And the writers, every eight days, send us another script. Eight days. Mm -hmm. Every eight days. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like Christmas. <laughs> 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 and do you, do you draw inspiration from real life characters or not? Tim? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yes and no. I mean, closer to home than one might think. I feel like I really watched my father for this role. He was probably my greatest inspiration. In what way? Well, he's, he's really the greatest diplomat I've ever known mm -hmm. and been ruled by. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he has a way of making you feel like you're the only person in the room and that what you are saying is valid mm -hmm. and that what he has to offer is worth it. And I think I'm sort of beginning to see that that's a lot of what Elizabeth is up to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yay dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Tim, what about their marriage, Henry and Elizabeth's marriage? Well, I, I mean, I've gone on record before as saying that it's unique in the particular television environment right now because it's so good. Right. And it's not good because it's not without problems and challenges, but it's good because these two people are passionately committed to making it work and to fighting fair and, uh, and you know, looking at these challenges as uh, something to help them grow in their relationship rather than something that, you know, is, uh, is something where they have to win or, or defeat one another or undermine each other. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I think that in some ways, <clears throat> the easy thing to say is that, you know, um, Madam Secretary is a great role model for women, but we've had three women Secretary of States in the real world. I think that in some ways, and there's certain political uh, candidates who I can think could learn from this, the, 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 re <laughs> the, the real role model in this, in this show is Henry, because he is a man who's strong enough and frankly has balls enough to support his wife, to love her, and to not be threatened by her or try to undermine her in, in any way. So I think that's great. Now, did Tim come up with that on his own, or did you write his <laughs> <laughs> He added a whole lot. <laughs> I have to check my... Um, Chuck, let me ask you, how close are you guys off? I mean, you spend a lot of time together anyway, just working. How close are you? We don't like each other. <laughs> I haven't seen some of these people in days. Um, we don't actually, I mean, in, in the first season, there was a lot of time spent. <laughs> he and I actually have known each other for 35 years. Yeah. 
Um, but in the first season, that there were a lot of kind of like cast get-togethers and, and things because we were just starting out and just kind of trying. You're trying to form a group and a family, and and, and now everyone's at work for an enormous amount of hours. Keith commutes to California. Um, sometimes I only see BB at the table reads, mm -hmm. um, but the atmosphere on the set is always mm -hmm. familiar and familial, and, and and one of the things I look forward to the most is that you, you show up and you belong here. Um, and a big part of that is just the sense of, of comfort uh, with each other, and that's one of the things I like most about doing a series television mm -hmm. is that you just create that home away from home. BB, do you guys talk politics? Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit. It, it's sort of, uh, and lately it's just gotten so uh, disgusting and uh, horrifying that. I, I can feel us sort of easing off because it's just, it's just too depressing. We all, we all know what's going on and we all feel the same way mm -hmm. and we're all horrified so we don't. But I, I would uh, just like to say with what Jelko said is that almost all of us are theater rats. Mm. And so we have, there's, um, there's something we kind of come in with, you know, we showed up with with uh, connections all between us. And if not having worked with each other or worked with somebody who worked with each other, we were doing a show at the same time. So that I think that um, our theater backgrounds are, are quite a, a, a real connective tissue. And is that a rarity in terms Not of in New York. <laughs> yeah. in, in terms of uh, network television episodes. Uh, again, not to be uh, flip, but I, I think not in New York, no. Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's jokes. In fact, some, somebody made the joke on the Tony Awards, you open up any playbill of, <laughs> of any show and you say, mm -hmm. ah, Law and Order. <laughs> and now you're starting to see, oh, Madam Secretary, Law and Order, yeah. Elementary, yeah. Person of Interest. It's all of this, this production here, and they're all, um, and you know, people And you worked guests. with anyone else before, previously on this? Uh, oddly enough, I did an episode of Wings, so it was television. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. Keith and I did a movie together. We did oh, we, were uh, we did Wings together. and a movie together, where we didn't work. We together. didn't work together. Jelk and I worked in the theater, television, and movies together. Right. Yep. Uh, the only one. We milk cows. That's that's. <laughs> Well, we're going to open it up uh, for questions from the audience. You're a I'm told to. Lover, so. Yes. 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 There you go. Theater lovers. Um, you are to wait for a microphone, but just raise your hand and they can bring the microphone to you if you have uh, a question. Hi, my name is Shannon Hong. Uh, this question is for Taya. I know uh, you have a lot of interest in uh, things like UNICEF and a lot of uh, various charities. And I was wondering if your work in Madam Secretary has. Uh, given you or broadened your experience in politics or spurred an interest in public service, maybe especially in relation to this election? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what was the question? <laughs> I, I think, uh, I mean, it's been very interesting. I haven't really talked about UNICEF on the show. I feel like we're holding off on that one. Um, as Syria progresses, I feel like we're getting very close. Um, I, it, I, don't, I don't know, what I love about UNICEF is that UNICEF is political. And that's always been my sort of, my background in any kind of politics because UNICEF works with the government um, where we are. And that's, that makes us a little bit unique. Um, but this is a reminder, certainly this job is a reminder, not only of the thousands of people who work for the State Department and everywhere else in public service. Um, the unsung heroes, not the ones battling it out um, on, on Sunday nights. And I think uh, I'm, I'm more grateful for their work because I'm more aware of it, surely, from doing the show. That's true. Mm -hmm. it, are you guys involved in the plot line? Is there a discussion about, and how does that work? Not what, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, okay. No. Okay. Because okay. when you said, when you said we're not there yet with UNICEF, but we might, 
I was did you we see did the intimidation that I was no, doing? No, no. <laughs> you caught it. Because what I was doing is like, well, we haven't done it yet. Yeah. yeah. But we're sort of getting close to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Remember, as we near these crisis things with Syria yeah. and stuff. Sure. Absolutely. Shouldn't we take that on? Yeah. Uh, we, do talk, we do talk we do in general talk. terms yeah. about stories. We talk stories. Yeah. All right, next question. Hi, my name is Sarah. Um, my question was, um, it's to the whole panel, is there anything you've learned from a previous character that you've kind of integrated into your current character? Because I find it fascinating how sometimes characters and people connect. Mm. Keith? Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I would have to... I've learned something from everything I've ever played. And all of that comes to whatever I'm doing now. So yeah, I realize it's a very general answer, but yes. Um, specifically, no. Mostly what I draw on to play this guy is uh, I first look to what I'm given. Um, by Barbara and company. Um, that tells me who he is in their eyes, and then I find whatever I can in myself to bring truth to what they've given me. Um, <clears throat> it's the best I can do. <laughs> I think one of, the, one of the things that I appreciated from the first script that was different from a lot of what I get to do or have done in the past is, is just this level of humor underneath things. Mm. Uh, that doesn't, it's not a wacky humor, and it's, uh, um, but, but it's an everyday kind of approach uh, for people under stress. And it's one of the things I, I like the most uh, that gets folded into scenes and folded into the character work uh, that is, you know, something I, I play bad guys in suits, but, but this, <laughs> this time around, that kind of added element is something I, I, I really loved from the start. Jelko is really funny, by the way. <laughs> you know, I, I think I learned something. This is sort of a ba backwards thing. But I learned a lot about my own family because I, you know, what I realized when I got this role, and th this just isn't just from Henry, but my father, my uncle, my aunt, and my, my, and my two aunts were all uh, in the military. They all served in World War II. My uncle ended up being in the FBI. My grandmother was in the CIA. Uh, my aunt, one of my aunts was at one point the highest ranking uh, woman in the military in the United States. My grandfather was a Methodist minister. And so all this stuff had a profound effect on me. And what I realized, and by the way, all these people were politically real lefties, but they <laughs> believed in public service. They believed that doing service was something, This sort of piggybacking on this UNICEF question, they believed that public service was something that was their duty as a citizen of the United States. And that made me think a lot about the people who uh, are not only in this cast, but the people who we read about in the newspaper and who we often vilify. But they are, in fact, they're trying to do something most of the time uh, for the public. And I, I think that's uh, very important and something that has uh, had a profound effect on me. Hi, first I would like to give a shout out to Barbara. I am from Virginia. My daughter just graduated recently from James Madison. I believe that's oh, your alma mater. Absolutely, go to yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, Also want to say, Taya, uh, you're one badass working mom. Thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> but as um, Elizabeth McCord, I'd like to know from you, is Taya Leone anything like Elizabeth McCord in real life? Uh, can you talk about similarities and differences? <laughs> Well, if I could get my kids to watch the show, <laughs> I would say ask them. Um, I think, you know, you, you bleed into your character. There's no doubt. And it's interesting that my daughter uh, on the show is applying to colleges, and I am right now going through that with my own daughter. Um, I, I think Elizabeth is a little pushy. Uh, in ways that I pride myself on being much more... Mm. Uh, Jimmy, wait a minute. But I, I, uh, we, we do share some, some... I make a better breakfast, damn it. That's, good. that's, that's all I got. What do you make for breakfast? Oh, I'm like fierce at breakfast. <laughs> I will do, I'll do anything. I'll do omelets. 
I mean, dinner, you're screwed. <laughs> breakfast, I love breakfast. Me too. Because I sort of feel like, hey, you st I started it. You know what I mean? I started it right. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're a little different. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have a question uh, right over here. Oh, sorry, and then down here. Um, hi. So my, one of my favorite quotes from the show is there's plenty of room in the world for mediocre men, but there's no room for mediocre women. I know that's the cut short version, but it's really just an amazing quote. Um, and this quote had a lot of impact on me and it inspires me every day to constantly just be a good person and just tell the truth. How did it impact all of you guys? Great question. Well, you better well, start, because you wrote it. <laughs> I actually didn't write it. I wish I'd written it. What happened was uh, we had uh, Secretary Madeleine Albright uh, appear in that episode. And uh, we got a call. She got the script, and, and we got a call from her office saying, well, who does she talk to about her notes? <laughs> and, and well, I guess that would be us. And she didn't have many notes. She was very happy with what she had to do. But she had that quote that she wanted to include. Um, and I sort of felt like, uh, you know what, in a way, only she has the authority to say that, you know? Um, or she certainly has full authority to say that. So if this is coming out of her mouth and it's her line, I was incredibly proud for it to be on the show. So it is. You know, there's another famous Madeleine Albright, Al Albright quote, which is, there's a cold place in hell for women who don't help other women. Mm -hmm. Yes, raise your hand. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Hi, I'm Patrice. Um, Taya, during the first uh, season, you were on the golf course. How long did it take you to make that, <laughs> that shot off the tee box? Was it one no, take? No, no, yeah. I'm really good. I, <laughs> I, 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 that my baby was a one-off. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The entire crew, a lot of guys on our crew, the entire crew's like, Okay, we're gonna be here a while. They're sitting down, and literally the first time it was straight out, and they were all like, "Holy moly!" Oh. <laughs> that was a good day. Yeah, was a good day. <laughs> Very nice. Hi, my name is Taylor. One of the things that appeals to me most to the show is the element of emotion and reality. So you have like the, the kiddo aspect. You have just the heartfelt like breakdowns, especially after like the coup. Um, <laughs> and after working um, in, with several politicians, I feel like the American public never gets to see that actual side of politicians, especially with TV shows. You only see the policy, 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 but you never actually see that human side. How important is it, um, I guess, when writing it and when acting out the show to really show that human aspect of like political figures and yeah, actually, I guess that's. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll, I'll jump in and, okay. uh, you know, one of the, the reasons we wanted to do this show was to show a woman in this position but in full context. Um, if you're only showing her doing the job, that doesn't give you an idea of what we're, women are really up against trying to do a job like that. You've got to take her home and show her dealing with her family. You have to see her dealing with her staff. Um, and, you know, sort of being strong when she has to be strong and soft when she needs to be soft. And, and to me, the whole, the whole journey doesn't make any sense out of context. So it was really important to us that we did that way. I also think, as Taya said, there are so many people um, in our country, thousands of them, that are in public service and they're spending their life and they're sacrificing a lot of their family time to do things that are important for the country and important for us. And we really wanted to show the cost. Um, and we also wanted to show the full breadth of that and also try to inspire young people to get into politics, because I think right now it's the last thing that our kids want to get into right now. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a good lesson for me. I, I met Madeleine Albright at the White House Correspondents Dinner probably 10 years ago. And I walked up to her, and, she, and I was doing another TV show at the time called Private Practice. And she looked at me and she goes, Pete! What? Oh my God, like what's happening with you and Violet? How come, and I was like, wait, whoa, 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 she's this tall, right? Like, wait, you see, and I said, wait, first of all, you, you, you watch a TV show and you know the names of the characters, like you're solving geopolitical crises and writing books and lecturing, like, and I, and I realized, you know, in this dumb way, like, of course, she's got shows. She's like everybody else. She has a personal life 
like Bill and Hillary Clinton, who like <laughs> um, and you know, we we all we all go home and you know get in bed and snuggle up Shit. with something. I, I find yeah. it really interesting, um, you know, even in in my uh, s small way that, you know, there's a fine line I think that that we play in this show, and that is, for one thing, we see crises all day long. People in the State Department are aware of crises all around the globe, all the time. They see suffering all the time. And so they don't fall apart every time. But I find it interesting to find the places where, OK, that one got to me, and making sure there's a way to convey that within, while still servicing the plot and servicing the piece, mm -hmm. but serve the character also to show that every once in a while, that was just too much, you know. It was a child, or it had something to do with my family, and that was just a little too much. So I find that a, an ongoing, interesting, you know, aspect of the uh, of the show, and and for my character. Hi, my name is Brandy. Um, there are so many things that your show gets right. There is the remarkable chemistry in that marriage. There is uh, the civics lessons of what happens with the Secretary of State. You are so audacious in your writing. I've noticed that you don't um, shy away from holding accountable certain bad actors, whether it's Russia or China, in terms of how they act in the, in the global stage. And then there's also how you treat people of faith, the integrity of, and the knowledge that comes through Henry McCord. The question I have and the concern I have is that there's so much, but you could potentially not be reaching the broadest audience. I only found out about this show this past summer, mm. and it was only because it was on Netflix. Mm. Most of us, we just don't have a television, and so how are you gonna bridge that? How are you gonna reach out to an audience to make sure that you know this gets widely distributed? Well, Anyone here what from a the compliment. Uh, yeah. I, I, just, I just whispered CBS, CBS All, all access. access. Yes, yes. yes. CBS, CBS All Access. access. But yeah. thank you. Yeah. I mean, I really think, I appreciate what you're saying, because one of the things that I wanted to do with this show was to create a world, first of all, where we could talk about politics in a way that wasn't so polarized and polarizing and, and allow everyone into the discussion. But another thing for me was, you know, during the real spate of shows that were about the celebration of horrible behavior, <laughs> which is still sort of going on, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, and some of them are fun and all that. But that is not what drives me. It has never been what has driven me as a writer because I'm very, I'm fascinated by the dignity, the human struggle, if you will, and not just the struggle, but the dignity in it. And part of the dignity of that, as as Jelka was saying, was the humor. It's I, I want to write shows that look a little more like our lives do, and um, so I I think that the way this show really gets noticed is by being a little different in that regard. There's a certain level of ideology to it that's a little different. But I think that, um, you know, I think, I think we get noticed by being a little different and by you telling a couple million of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great point about, about, about the audience. It really is. And I know that CBS has all access now for people who have mobile devices. I forget what it is. It's about maybe $5 a month or something like that. Yeah. Is it 10? Is it, it? yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, sorry, yeah. It's, um, but, I mean, Madam Secretary gets how many million viewers on a Sunday night? We got almost yeah. 13 million this, you know, with our bus. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> there's, to, to, get, to get an audience on television or anywhere with that is, I mean, is so spectacular and singular. There's just no other shows that are getting audiences like that. I mean, CBS is dominant on Sunday nights in part because of Madam Secretary and, and 60 Minutes, but there's a huge... A huge audience, yeah. Especially for a show that actually makes you think. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lee, and I, I want to thank you all for what must be hellish hours of, of work. <laughs> I can't imagine how you do it. Um, and, but I have a serious question for Taya. Are you wearing your red hot chili pepper shirt? <laughs> <laughs> that was hot. That was, that was, that was, that was pretty hot. That was great. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing leather pants, okay? 
<laughs> I'm wearing leather skirt. Yeah. I got a leather skirt. Leather skirt. Oh, what did, what did yeah. you say, baby? You... I'm wearing a leather skirt. Yeah, a leather skirt. Hey. And fishnets. <laughs> I'm wearing leather underwear. <laughs> 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 I'm wearing fish <laughs> <laughs> Anyone fish else? <laughs> Anyone else? Shelko? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> Hi. I'm um, wondering if you're able to speak to the political leanings of your audience. Do you happen to know that information or a sense, have a sense of that, of your 13 million deaths? I want to take that go, one first. Go. No, Just go. because this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of. Uh, we talked early on about the what almost maybe we tripped into. I don't know that it was the foremost uh, guideline for the show, but not mentioning the words Republican or Democrat. Yeah. And then we got into it, and then we became adamant about it. And here we are taking on an election, and I can tell you we're on episode nine, and you're still not going to hear it. That's a feat. And I think that the idea that we're encouraging, not that we set out to, but what's happening is that people are actually listening to the issues. And instead of a sort of party <laughs> loyalty, uh, it's listen to the policy, listen to the plan. And if he doesn't have one, that's what you should be thinking. Of. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's interesting that um, People who are, you know, she's an excellent Secretary of State. He's an excellent president. So people who are Democrats think, oh, it, well, they're, they're Democrats. <laughs> right. And people who are Republicans say, oh, well, it's, they're Republicans. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Really, really. And we have an amazing crew that, and we have a lot of different beliefs on our crew from all walks of life. And the great thing I think about our show is. You, if you go on our set, you will hear like the grips and the electrics talking about whatever particular issue we're dealing with, and they have really smart points of view on both sides of it. And yeah. that's what we hope that the show engenders in the general public, just a conversation, a real conversation. One of my favorite things about what we do is this constant tension between what is humanly and morally right mm -hmm. and what might be politically right or expedient. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are always struggling with how to arrive at the right decision, usually despite what the politics of that decision might be. Mm -hmm. And uh, nine times out of 10, she's right, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, one, one, of, one, yes, one of the things I love about that tension is, uh, is the fact that that's created as Taya said, without ever mentioning the word Republican or Democrat. It's quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Or independent. <laughs> well, or independent. Yeah. Well, yeah. Careful. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Been there. <laughs> Yet. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rose. And I really love the show. Watch it every Sunday after football. After. <laughs> <laughs> when, it run, when football runs late, are you like, eh. yeah, yeah. got to set the DVNR another yeah. half hour? I know. Um, I, my question is, as serious as a lot of the topics are and everything like that, do you have a certain way of, you know, kind of leaving a, the tension of the moment or whatever on the set? you know, that makes you laugh and stuff in between takes or something like that? Well, I mean, if you look at our cast and, and, it, and it keeps going, comedian, 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 comedian. <laughs> so there's, I, and, and it's funny that you bring it up because we do draw to that. It is hard to stick inside some of this subject matter on the hours and to, and to really live it as, as closely and as realistically as we can and as deeply as we can. And then, the, you know, oh, you should see our blooper reel. Damn, we should get that. Oh. You sort of, almost every take ends with something. <laughs> Somebody goes off. And it's, it is, I have to say, you guys, it's a joy. It is a joy to work here. Yeah. Well, it has been a joy to have all of you here. Thank you for all the great questions.